by technical difficulties. <laughs> I got everybody's texting me. What's going on? Are you coming on? So thank you so much. We have the nature queen herself, Karen Devins, and then we have Ronald Kotinsky, right? Yes, you got it. You did. You said it right. Yeah. <laughs> very, very good. So I, hi, Liz. So I kind of let everybody kind of get on here and everything. Hi, Dale. Um, we're going to be talking flamingos and I'm going to be learning what in the world is a flamboyant flamingo. What is it? A I'm flamboyant. dying to know. A flamboyant. What is it? Actually, a flamboyant is just the name they give to a, I think it's more than two or three flamingos. They call it a flamboyance. So it's just a oh. name. Yeah. It's just a name <laughs> given to a, to a group of uh, flamingos. Oh, so it's not a flamboyant flamingo. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's it's a good name, I guess, for a very colorful bird. Okay, I I noticed that they're very um they're constantly looking around. They're like seem like to appear to be on high alert at all times. Is that yeah. true? Uh, I, they're very social for sure. They, you know, they look at each other. They they do look around. They are very cautious. Um, but once you settle in they kind of just ignore you as long as you don't move around that much if you sit still and you stay in the same spot they will walk right past you and actually had that happen to me i had them walk within by 10 feet of me as long as you don't move wow hi linda hi essie um everyone's getting on here so karen you're you're in a hotel right now <laughs> yes. and you are actually on the hunt now i just want to ask something so Flamingos used to be, they're considered native to Florida, but they're really not around. Is that, I, I was reading that they were pretty much extinct because of people were harvesting their eggs and their feathers in the 1920s. The feather trade um, decimated them for sure. And also their meat. They were hunted for meat as well. But uh, Ronald, do you, know, do you know when they were produced and I'm not sure exactly. Yeah, I mean, I have this, yeah, my information is about the same as yours. So between 1870 and 1921, they were harvested and pretty much wiped off uh, the face of Florida, unfortunately. And then there was right. put in place. I don't know the exact date, but there was laws enacted to protect. And it, it wasn't only the flamingos, it was egrets. Uh, any wading bird was used, unfortunately. Their feathers were used for hats and clothing. Wow. I did not know that. I'm, I'm telling. I've, I've heard sad stories. Um, you know, dealing with Florida Country Magazine, and you deal with the old timers. They call the, uh, they call it the curlew, which is the white ibis, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, there's plenty of those. Thankfully, there's a lot of those now. And I mean, I see them and, in my yard all the time. And they used to eat those back in the day. And, uh, and I, I've met a lot of the old timers that they would go. Uh, uh, we would eat those. And I'd go, you would eat those? And they said, oh, yeah, my grandfather used to bring that home. And they called them curlews or something. And I really? go, yeah, you, 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 don't, you don't eat them. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm pretty excited. So they have recently come back from Hurricane Adalia, right? That's when they showed well, back up. There's There is a population of around 20 that are native down in the Everglades near Flamingo. Um, they're seen off and on by the, the staff that 
of the Everglades Park that were, but recently as these have started to move south, the ones that were blown in, they're now the population, they counted up to 70 down here, which is really? why I'm here in the Everglades, getting ready to go out in the morning to hunt for them, see if we can oh find them. Oh my gosh. So unfortunately, Hung Do could not be with us. Um, he is in IT and I, I feel for him because I did that 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And um, I feel for him. So he couldn't make it with us because he still is at work. So I did tell him if he wants to jump on at any time, he can. But he's like, I'm talking, he's out in his kayak and he's in the Everglades and he takes phenomenal photos too. Um, great videos. I'm talking, you guys just travel. Karen, you travel so many places. Like one minute you're in Costa Rica, next minute you're in Alaska. And it's like, I told you when I saw you at the Eagle Nest over the weekend, like, I truly envy you guys. I'm talking about, I love photographers, period. And uh, Florida country, we do so much on wildlife. I'm very passionate about wildlife and protecting wildlife. Yes, yes. So I I really, um, I'm a big fan of all photographers. I'm talking, and I was looking at your work, Ronald, and I love dragonflies. Oh, and yes. And I've never seen a dragonfly mate. And that is some weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It happens mid midair. It's yeah. uh, yes. I've got to share this picture of Ronald's sure. because ahead. they, they've got to see this because I just sat there and stared. I was showing Karen. I'm like, have you ever seen dragonflies mate? Um, and I didn't know, but I'm going to try it. That's as big as I can make it. You but can click to enlarge. There's a click that's to enlarge. The, that's the mail, right? How can I enlarge this? Let me see. Uh, click to enlarge. There's, it says underneath. The oh, okay. Oh. oh. And then there's also a pop out. See the pop? Yes, there you go. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So that's the mail, right? That's got his head. <laughs> I think. I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I would probably say that it is. Yes. Basically. That is like the crazy, that's so alien like right there. I don't even know what to say, but does, does she kill him afterwards? I not, I, I've only heard about that in spiders. Certain spiders will kill their mates, but. <laughs> okay. This is G rated. I know. I, you know, if it's, it's all because of Eagle porn. Okay. Now it's dragonfly. Porn. You know, I, I don't know, but something about that picture like really freaked me out when I saw that. And I was like, oh my gosh, like really? That's what goes on? <laughs> Let's see. Linda says she needs to go to Costa Rica. She, she needs a trip to Costa Rica. <laughs> you, like those are amazing. You had, had photos of toucans, monkeys. What's, I'm going to ask each one of you this, but how did you start? in photography was it always wildlife photography karen was it just photography in general no. for me really my vision is very poor i cannot see birds very well and when i got a bridge camera a couple, about three years ago an sx60 and i zoomed in to the eyelashes on the eagle i was hooked I could not really? believe the feather detail that i cannot see with my naked eyes so that was it. That was it. And I, I'm, I've upgraded my cameras over the years and I've, it's gotten better and so better. Just, and... So you just started doing photography three years ago? Yeah. Really? Yes. yes. Well, right, I use Ronald. my cell phone. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. You sound right. like me. I have a <laughs> Canon 50D, but that's it. Now, Ronald, you've been taking photography for a long time, haven't you? Yeah, I've been uh, hardcore probably since 2016. And then prior to that, uh, more lightweight. Uh, but then now I've upgraded to all professional equipment. So I started with sunsets in Florida. I mean, Florida has the West Coast has some of the most amazing colors, most amazing yes. sunsets. We also get some pretty amazing storms. So I really started out with landscape and lightning photography, which I still to this day do. I call it I'm a birds and bolts guy at this point, but um, that's what got me started. And then I purchased a kayak in about 20, 2012, I think it was. And when you start going out in your kayak, you see things that most people don't see because you're up really early or you're staying out after sunset. And then you start seeing wildlife. And at that point, I'm like, 
I need to start bringing my camera with me. Uh, of course, I was a little nervous because, you know, everyone has the worst fear. Well, you're going to flip your kayak. You're going to drop right. your in the water. But um, that's never happened. I, I'm Just so you know, too, I do have a very large kayak as far as kayaks go. It's a Hobie Pro Angler. So it's foot yes. power. Yeah. It's, it's a fishing one. It is a fishing one, exactly. And that's what I really started out uh, doing. And that really got me into photography hardcore. And then I just kept upgrading and upgrading. And now I have a 500 millimeter F4 lens, which actually I have right here. I'll show it. Just I so got to see this thing. You know, what it looks like. Oh my so, gosh. Yeah, that's my like Desiree, isn't it? Yeah. It's um, as long as my arm. <laughs> but this is the one that I use now primarily for, for burning. How, how heavy is that? Uh, the lens is probably about eight pounds, nine pounds, and with the camera, another two or three. So probably about 12 pounds I'm carrying around. But oh, my gosh. You get used to it. I mean, and I've been a gym junkie since I'm 15 years old. So I'm that helps. To, it helps a lot. It does. I mean, so I do a lot of hands-free shooting where, as maybe a lot of folks may just be stuck on using a uh, tripod. So I'm right. able to move. The, the problem with it, I mean, I still, don't get me wrong, I still use a tripod for certain setups. You know, if it's a bird that's not moving, I'm shooting a nest, I don't need to be holding the camera. But when it comes to fast moving hummingbirds, like, for example, or even eagles for that matter, it really helps to be able to just react instantly. So I'm going to have to uh, check. I love hummingbirds. I have a hummingbird that shows up. Well, now the hurricane took the tree down, but it would show up around like well about right now shows up and it would stay till about february a little bitty guy would come around every time and i tried hummingbird feeders and everything and he just would not go to them and i don't know if it's the same hummingbird that comes back or is it just a you know juvenile that happens to come but it's just weird he shows up every year and I saw him for the first time the cool morning a couple of mornings ago. It was kind of cool. He showed up and he came around the corner and the tree's gone. The flowering tree was gone. And oh, no. He, he's going to lose his food source. Yeah. So, he yeah. came around and he stopped and he just, he was gone. And I was like, oh, no, now he's gone. So people are wanting to see pictures. They're wanting to see pictures. So I'm going to show uh, your flamingo shots, Karen. Um, so we're going to show some of Karen. I can't believe you only started taking photos three years ago, Karen. <laughs> Blows my mind. Well, I have so, a professional camera now. Whether I'm professional or not is up for debate, but I do have a camera that no, is. It's, it's, it's very beautiful. So I'm going to I'm going to share some of your flamingo shots. So here is one. This this one this is honey. She's been called Honey. She's, uh, or he or she, is at Honeymoon Island. Ronald, have you been to see her? I have, but she's gone. So I arrived, I guess, a day late and a dollar short. So, oh, she, yeah. Uh, she, she is. Uh, so she's she no, did. Yeah, she's no longer in the spot uh, that she was in. So, okay. Oh, wow. So is she one that came with the hurricane or? She, she is, wanted. and they, there were two that sh that were on Honeymoon Island, and sadly, one did perish. They found the body in the mangrove. I kind of wondered oh. if maybe that was a, it was its partner, and that was why it hung around for so long by itself there. I'm not oh. sure. Oh, oh I, I didn't know the one had perished. Wow. Yes, one died there. Mm -hmm. Is it from injuries from the storm? Probably. I'm not sure. If they did a necropsy or not it, but it was in this mangroves right near where this one hung out for a few, quite a few oh. weeks. Yeah, that is so partner. sad. So here, I'm going to move to your next one. Is this honey too? Yep. The all the reflection shots were from her from that night. I don't. They're absolutely beautiful. I love reflection shots. Those are like my favorite ones. So I'm going to keep going through. This is very beautiful. So, you know, I have a picture perfect. Uh, we do that picture perfect contest every issue and like hands down, you would be winning. Well, I'll have to, I'll, ah, where I'll have to submit. <laughs> I know. Karen's going to take everybody down. <laughs> uh, why is it not there? We go. No, I have, some, I don't know why it doesn't want to go to the next picture. Okay. We're going to, maybe it's going backwards. There we go. 
that's a beautiful shot. Thank you. I love this one, especially with the water droplets falling off. Yeah. I I can pick winning photos, and that's like stuff I look for, like attention to detail in these. Like right there, the water popping up from the bill. Beautiful. A little earlier in the day, so not not yeah. reflection time yet. <laughs> They're absolutely beautiful. Now these must uh, they're, they're, they're juveniles, is, right? Well, I think they are young birds, actually. I read that it takes uh, two to four years for them to get full adult plumage. And those were, um, there were six that are hanging out at Shell Key. So, okay. So that and was where, part of that group. And where they're is the, Shell they're Key They're the ones at? that were hanging, they were found on Fort DeSoto and they've kind of moved off of Fort DeSoto to the Shell Key Preserve right there. Same general area, but a little bit offshore. So it's a little bit trickier to get to them. They're, they're a little more isolated. So I guess maybe they're a little more comfortable. <laughs> I don't know, but they seem to be finding plenty of food. They're in no hurry to leave. So that's exciting. Okay. Yeah, you have some amazing, I don't even know what to pick Ronald out of your photos. Like I'm looking at your alligators, stunning everything what would you like me to show um, uh i could see, show Liz was your dolphin photos oh yeah that one is that one was published worldwide uh france england and that one i always get accused of photoshopping because it looks too perfect um where and that is was, it uh okay let's see if we can find it for you uh one where from your kayak where the the dolphins yes. eating the fish and they're jumping off. Oh my god, I love yes. that shot. I gotta see it. Yeah, hold on. Let me see if I could find. I know it's on my website. Give me a second. And you see where think. the share screen button is on the bottom, Ronald? Okay, I could do okay. that. Yeah, if you want me to share, I, I could do yeah. a little share. Where we're gonna have him because. I'm talking about you can go to his website. I'm gonna type it for everybody. He's got so many phenomenal photos. I cannot just pick one. I'm talking about you're amazing. Like I really, Karen, I love your photos. Uh, Ronald, I love your photos. Thank you. <laughs> and, you. I, I knew you needed to see his work. Yes. I told when you told me Karen last night, and I went and looked at his stuff. I was like, wow. Is okay. It's so. Beautiful. Can you see my sharing or no? I can. Yeah, so I'll the start. Hummingbird. Yeah, I'll start with the hummingbird. One of my absolute favorite. Um, I just amazed to me. They don't even seem real. Something that can move backwards and up, down, and just their movements are absolutely yes. incredible. Uh, this is a male ruby throated, and I've been dying to get a shot, a clear shot, which is very difficult too because they're usually uh, in front of flowers, so it's kind of a busy background. But this shot, I was able to get it uh, perched on a, on a stick, and there was enough light to get the what they call the gorget. Uh, lit up uh, in red, which it's funny because if you've ever seen a, a male hummingbird, depending how they turn, they, you know, their head's all black, but if they turn a certain way, then their necks light up. And this right. guy did me justice. So I was very happy with that shot. Probably my That's favorite. That's a beautiful word. shot. Thanks. Uh, I'll go to the flamingos since we're talking flamingos. This shot, this was at Fort DeSoto when they were still in an area that um, was accessible through through walking. I mean, we still trudge through two feet of water at least, um, or about a foot. So we trudged through water and we were able to get into position, sit still. And then it's the magic hour again with the light and the dark background and, uh, the reflection in the water. Uh, this one has many names, but I, I think I kind of like the name Pinkfinity. Uh, this one, actually I sold quite a few prints already of this particular image. Uh, and that's, like I said, those are the hurricane Adalia. Uh, flamingos. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Uh, yeah. So when we were there, there was over seven, there was over seven flamingos um, or flamboyants as they call them or as a group of flamingos. <laughs> I love um, flamboyants. Yes. And the gray one is a juvenile. Uh, they don't have the color yet. So they have a grayish white overtone. Let's see another one. 
I do also like environment shots. Uh, they're a little harder to appreciate on social media because your screen's so small, but um, right. this was also worth the Soto. But to me, I mean, I have a love of uh, landscapes, clouds, lightning. So I, was, you know, I storm clouds. I here your, with, light, your lightning photos. I'm talking about how hard is that to catch lightning? It's, it is difficult. The, the most difficult part is getting into position into a storm in time set up and actually have a storm that delivers visible bolts. Uh, the technicals, once you grasp the technicals, it's not that difficult uh, technically, but the hard part is being in the right spot at the right time. And it right. took me years, years and years to get really good at it. And last year was probably my best year ever. And, you know, you're also at the mercy of nature. So not every year is as good. This year was not a very good year for uh, what I would call photogenic lightning, but uh, last year was really, really good. So here's the same photo again, cropped tighter. Uh, okay. Let's see. Is it showing up? I don't see it. No, it's, I don't okay. know. But everybody else can see it or? No. Can you see the, no. I lied. <laughs> the share is not working. Hold on. Let me check. Yeah, it's not, it's not working. Let me go back. It's, we must have lost it somehow. Share screen. Sorry yeah, about that. Show, show that. Okay. Infinity, the infinity flamingo again, too. Oh, okay. Like, so, so no one's oh, been able okay. to see it. It says Ronald. I've never seen. Oh, here it comes. Okay, that was weird. I've never seen that before. Oh, okay. Look at that. Okay, oh is everyone able to see it now? Okay. No? Now I yes. see it. Now I see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll go back to the infinity one. But I, uh, since I have this one up, I'll just talk a little bit about. Yeah, that. well, I'll leave this up. I think it yeah, was my was, fault, Ronald. <laughs> oh no worries. Um, yeah, sometimes if somebody's sharing or if you're the the lead, then you have to allow others to share. But uh, this is also for Fort DeSoto. I, I was able to get the camera very low. Uh, I shoot with a Canon R5, so it has a, a little viewer that pops out. So it's nice to be able to hold the camera low to the water and be able to get that, that low angle shot. Uh, now, where are you shooting from? Are you in a kayak? Are you... Not in this way? case. I'm not in a kayak for this case. Uh, we went into the marsh. Uh, so like I guess we were treading water for probably a thousand feet or more. And uh, we were able to set up and just sit still. That, that's key. When it comes to bird watching, once you get in place, don't move. <laughs> because don't then move. the action, yeah, don't move. Once you move, you know, and it becomes very difficult to, I mean, everyone knew about these birds. They were in the news and everything. So on, like, on the weekend, probably nearly impossible to get a shot like this. And it was difficult enough to get it during the week. Um, but you know, because everyone wants to get into position. And then as you move, you keep scaring the birds, moving and then moving them. But for this particular set of shots, we were uh, we were there on a Friday late, so there wasn't as many people. We were able to get into position and just basically stay in place. And like I said, the flamingos don't mind you. They will walk right past you. Um, and I had some of them walk within like 20 feet of me. And not that I need them to, because I have the 500 millimeter lens. So it's uh, not a requirement, but it's always nice for certain headshots. And this so, one I love to go, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, ahead, I, uh, you were talking there about water droplets. I love the water droplets. I, that's like an added yeah. bonus. <laughs> yes. I'm talking that. I think that's like my favorite when I see people that do photography with frogs on leaves and then the dew is coming down the leaf. Like I love any type of water droplets. It's just, I'm talking about because first off, it's very hard to catch and get it right um, on water droplets. Um, I used to, when I did do photography, I still do it occasionally. I don't have big lenses like you do, but I have a great 50D, Canon 50D that still does very well. That it's That's an art to catch stuff like that. It really is an art. And a lot of people don't understand. It's just like you think you just go and click and shoot and that happens. It does not happen that way with water droplets. <laughs> uh, no, no. And, you know, it's, yes, you're right. That is a common belief that you just went there with your iPhone and you pushed a button and, and you got your shot. It is hours and hours of waiting. Um, <laughs> it's also experience knowing when to go. Like this is golden hour time. Uh, so there's, there's a lot to it. And then you got to worry about overexposing, uh, particularly brighter subjects like white birds or pink birds. 
they could easily be overexposed and then you come home and your shots would be uh, losing a lot of detail. So there's, yeah. there's a lot to it. What so was it like? Go ahead. Show you got oh, another picture. Yeah. Is the sharing stopped again? It looks like every time I kill the, uh, yeah, I, I think when you go out, it does. So I'm looking for that little button to pop. Yeah. Up hold again. on. I'll share again. I, I think I see what's happening. Let's share this. There we go. So here's, here's one of my favorite photos. This one is, uh, very popular. I call it pink right. finity. Can, can you see it or? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Can you blow are... that up a little bit? Sure. Absolutely. I can zoom in. Oh my gosh. Look at that. You know, their eyes are so beautiful. Is it, are they like orange, like an orange color? Their eyes or are they a like pink color? They're, the eyes are actually like yellow. Someone sent me a meme. There was, uh, if you're into Star Wars, I'm not that, I mean, I watch Star Wars, but uh, Look the at the neck. Are, it's an infinity symbol. This is for Yeah, that was yeah. a mad, that was a mad <laughs> moment. I mean, yeah. I don't know how <laughs> you got that, Ronald. That's amazing. Did you, like, did you see the infinity symbol, Ronald, before you took the photo, or did it just come out like so, that? Yeah, I'm kind of zoned in. I'm watching. I'm watching. What you know, whether it's flamingos or eagles or whatever it is, I'm watching their movements, and I saw them coming together. Uh, and I'm like, wait a minute, they, they're, they're next. I said, at some point, their necks are going to cross, and of course, it happens very, very quickly. Uh, I mean, I'm shooting at uh, at least ten frames a second because you know there's there's no second chances. You you, you can't tell the birds to please stop there and let me get this perfect eight symbol or infinity symbol. So you kind of have to, you know, be in the moment. That's amazing. Yeah, see see the movement of the birds, whether, like I said, it, it could be bears or whatever you're shooting, um, and then just be ready for the shot. Uh, you know, have have things in focus. Make sure your exposure is good. Um, and you know, I shoot. I do. I shoot a lot of frames a second. I, you know, for me, digital photography gives you the benefit of being able to take a lot of shots really quickly. Uh, and then you find the ones that are just magic. And, you know, what, obviously I did see them crossing. So I'm like, oh, let me let the shutter rip. So I let the shutter rip. And then I find the perfect got it. alignment. And this one really, really worked. This is one of my favorites with their heads. It's and stunning. Like, I've got it's yeah. absolutely a stunning shot. Thank you. I love it. What was it like when you guys heard that these flamingos had been blown in by the hurricane? What were, what were you what was going through your mind, Karen? I can well, already see the smile well, on the face. I was I had been traveling, so I was in Alaska, and um, I'd just come back from Yellowstone, and I actually went to Georgia because not doing well. She ended up in the hospital, so I'm at in Georgia. And we're and here comes Adalia. I'm like, really? Uh, I'm from Fort Myers. You know, a lot of the, your listeners are for we, we were devastated last year. Right. right. Yes. And so it's like and the anxiety and it all is kind of, no, no, not again, not again, not again. Well, then it, you know, clearly passed us and unfortunately hit around the Cedar Key area when it came on land. But then, and we got some repercussions of it as it crossed the state into Georgia. But I'm watching the news the next day, and I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" The first report were four of them on the Sanibel Causeway. I'm like, "Oh my God, yeah. Mom, you're out of the hospital. You're doing good. I'll see you later. I gotta go find the flamingos." <laughs> but it took a while. I mean, I didn't see them right away. I came and looked and looked and looked and looked, and you know, it, it was rough. But what about you, Rob? So I heard about him on the news and um, okay. yeah, and I was pretty excited because I know that to actually go and see them, you actually have to, would go either to Cancun or uh, the Bahamas. So to have them on air. Yes. Yes. So to have them here in Florida, I, I was like, this is probably once in a lifetime chance. What are the odds that a, a hurricane starts in the Yucatan? And blows these birds as far as Wisconsin. So I, I was, yeah, I was really stoked because it is a special moment. Um, and you know, I heard about them further up north in Tarpon Springs, and then I heard about them in Treasure Island. And once I heard about them in Treasure Island, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, where are the odds that they're going to end up at Fort DeSoto? They seem to be heading south again. And um, 
I got a couple reports um, from my friends, saw them in Fort DeSoto. So I ran out that, that Friday. As soon as I could leave work, I left and uh, I was out at Fort DeSoto and it paid off. I mean, these were my best shots from uh, Fort DeSoto. That's I did go Fort DeSoto? This is, okay. So, I'm sorry, go ahead. What? This is in Fort DeSoto. This is where yes, you just yes. Oh, yeah, okay. these are these are Fort DeSoto, and this guy, like I was telling you, one of them walked by me very, very close, so I was able to um, practically They're get so like, a headshot. Beautiful. They're just so beautiful. Like I'm talking, about very clean um, bird. It just amazes me, and they're that color, right? Because of what they eat. That's yes, where they get the color from. That's it's what we're amazing. told. I mean, I, I, you know, I can't say with 100 percent certainty that it's always true because. You know, spoonbills also are uh, very colorful, and we hear the same right. thing that if they eat shrimp. But to be honest with you, I've never seen a spoonbill eat a shrimp, and I've seen a lot of spoonbills. So I'm sure it's yeah. part genetic and, and part diet too. Um, but um, they're yeah, right. they're absolutely stunning. Yeah. Um, My husband informed me that he's uh, you know he was uh, lived on Sanibel and uh, he grew up on Fort Myers Beach, and he informed me today. That what was the big deal about the flamingos? And I said, uh, what are you talking about? And he, he says, I've seen flamingos all of my life. And I said, no, you haven't. I said, you, you're you talking about a roseate spoonbill. And he yeah, said, oh God, no, yes. it's, a flamingo. it's a flamingo. So, of course, what does he, I said, is this, I show him a picture of a roseate spoonbill. I said, is this your flamingo off of Santa Bell? He goes, yeah. I go. That's a roseate spoonbill. He says, "I can't wait to hear everybody laughing that you're talking about flamingos like they're not here." And I go, "Okay, but well, we're going to be laughing at you over your roseate spoonbill." <laughs> oh, that's so, so funny! That is yeah. so funny. I we get yeah. that all the time. People see my spoonbill photos and they're like, "Oh, those flamingos are gorgeous." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> completely different. I heard a lot of people. Yes. If I could find it. Um, now, there. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Oh, that's pretty. Now, oh, yeah, is, that's, that, that's what is that the least better in, or what is that one? Oh, this one here? Term, um, yeah. This. Uh, Swallow Let me see what right. you're seeing. Yeah, okay. So, here's. Swallow this one's a red. This is a red This yes, one is a, uh, a swallowtail kite. Uh, okay, the swallowtail kite. Now, isn't yeah. that the one that will pierce its, it likes to pierce like stuff on barbed wire fences and stuff? The kite? Oh, that's no, a shrike. The, um, that's a you know, loggerhead shrike. shrike. Yeah. Mm. Oh, shrike. that, yeah. They like to put, pierce their victims on barbed wire. I've seen them put snakes and lizards and they're just speared through the barbed wire. They're, they're, their nickname is Butcher Bird. Yes. And they're oh, very really? small. They're not, they're not that large. Bird. No, they're tiny. Really? I have the kingfishers that every evening are, are across my pond getting mosquitoes and stuff. And that, I'm told, that's got to be a tough bird to uh, photograph, too, the kingfisher. Oh, they're terrible. Oh, it's nearly they're nice. awful. <laughs> they're awful. They're they awful. suck. No. <laughs> I love their mohawks. They got great mohawks. Yeah, they're, they they're very difficult. Oh, here we go. This is the shot I wanted to show you because you had brought up. And it's funny, someone saw this shot and they're like, you need to show this to all the, the northerners. <laughs> the pros, yeah. Those are yeah. Cool, though. These are flamingos. Very big difference. Oh my God, but, that's perfect. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I got to I gotta take a screenshot of this really quick to show my okay. husband. Uh, yes. The, Flamingo and rosy spoonbills. Yes. This there, I took a screenshot of it. That's a great. There he goes. There's the difference. He could not see the difference. Now, now there's the difference. <laughs> they are. Oh, that so that, it's, that is so pretty, and it's like it's a juvenile. It's just as big as the adult one. Yes, that's right. That's, that's a juvenile on the left. Correct. Yes, and they they grow up fast. I mean, size wise, but if colors will be another year or two. Mm -hmm. Now, doing wildlife photography, um, I know that you can get in some really hairy moments. Um, a good friend of mine that's a, I, I don't know if you've heard of William R. Cox, but he's a fabulous photographer. And he was actually built a blind, a uh, floating blind, so he could get the shot of this mammoth alligator. And oh. 
let's say that uh, he was taking photos and the alligator decided had enough, wasn't its day for photos and decided to take the blind and uh, he saved his camera and he saved himself, but destroyed his floating blind and took it over. Wow. So what, yeah, what's your scariest, what's your scariest moment, Ronald, you've ever been in taking wildlife photography? Um, when I almost had my kayak flip, and remember, I have a very, very large one. So uh, I was out actually fishing, and the manatees in the wintertime will stay near warm water. And a Hobie a, a pro angler has pedals, which go about 15 inches below uh, the kayak. So I'm pedaling along, and I must have tapped the back of a sleeping manatee. And all of a sudden, my kayak starts lifting, like, two feet in the air and I'm like, Oh God, please don't flip me. And it, you know, I said, it just turned out to be a manatee with a massive, massive tail. So that's probably my scariest moment. I mean, I've also been around alligators, which make me feel uncomfortable, but I've never had any issues uh, with alligators. Right. What about you, Karen? Well, I don't normally have issues with alligators either, but uh, one time and it was about, it was three, Three years ago, I decided to kayak to the deep hole on the Mayaka River in April. The water level was very low. It was gator mating season and I was by Ooh. myself. And uh -oh. I got out to the deep hole and I, there was a whole conglomeration of gators on the left. They all went in the water as I was approached, got, went in, but everybody was fine, it seemed. And I was about halfway across the hole. And one and rammed counts. my kayak with his mouth oh. open. And fortunately, I'm still here. He rammed me right where I was sitting. So my center of balance was very good. Had he hit me in the front or the back of my car, I would have tipped over. And that would have been all she wrote because there are thousands of gators bigger than my kayak in that deep hole. Oh, you, would have and, been, you would have been done over there. I area. will tell yeah. you that I have not been back there <laughs> i will not do that kayak again even with friends i i do kayak mayaka at the top on the on the top but not i won't go to the deep hole anymore maybe when the water level's higher and i'm with a group of people but that scared me did you I see was, the weight coming at you from the alligator they no, push away i mean it totally took it shocked me it took me by surprise because i was looking in the other direction at all the alligators that had just gone in the water and the next thing I know, wham, and it made a loud noise. And there were some people on the on the bank. And they when I when I got over to the bank, I was shaking and I they said they were like, um, I said, Did you hear that? They're like, Yeah, did you hit one with your paddle? I'm like, no, it charged me. So, you know, I had to gather my wits about me and and calm down and paddle back. And I paddled back and nothing happened, but that, no, that was pretty scary. That was serious. <laughs> Oh my god. It gave me pause. <laughs> I have so, a lot of respect uh, for them. <laughs> how does what is the behavior of a flamingo? Do they have different behaviors of other birds that you're used to photography doing photography with? Or I know Ronald, you had mentioned that they'll just walk right past you and don't really bother, you know, you don't bother them. Yeah, they're I would say they're more, much more tolerant of people, uh, you know, but if you move quickly, it doesn't matter what kind of bird it is. If you move quickly towards them, they're going to move away from you. But if you settle in um, and you can move slowly, they will accept your, your, your presence. And of course, with any bird, uh, the lower you stay, the less of a threat you appear to be. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's also key to stay low. Uh, and they're also very uh, gregarious. I mean, there's, you know, groups of six or seven typically, uh, and they make all sorts of noises and, you know, they, they love to chase each other. Sometimes the youngsters, there's a couple of shots if I could find them, but where the they're youngsters are being good. killed by the adult. So they're, yeah, they're, they're kind of goofy. You know, I was watching videos, um, when I was making that video for us today and I was looking at different videos and they're quite comical. Um, you know, them yeah. bickering back and forth with each other, yeah. chasing each other around, lifting their feathers up. Like, what is that all about when they lift their feathers up? Do you know? Because they'll, or their wings up, they lift their wings up. And it's like, like they'll all just start lifting wings at the same time. It's what is that all about? 
No, a lot of people don't realize the wings are jet black up underneath, right? They are yeah, really black. Can, yeah, you can see it here actually, where there is black and right here. Your necks are awesome. Yeah, I guess that's just you know showing dominance. I it's like I guess any 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 animal will show try to show dominance over uh, over another one. Uh, I was cracking up at this photo because it reminds me. It, 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 this one reminds me of every yard in Florida that has a plastic flamingo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. The classic <laughs> phone, right? <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> there's, there's the one-legged stance. Yeah, and they're like you said. Yes, they are. They're very social. Uh, you know, I, I believe. I, I don't. They're like eagles. I, I mean, eagles will mate for life, right? Uh, I don't know if I, flamingos mate for life. But they definitely have. I think uh, I read that they do. Yeah, and it, you can see it. I mean, just the way they certain ones hang out with each other. Um, yeah, they're they're great to photograph. They're much more entertaining than many other types of birds. <laughs> Ronald, Let's one see. thing that I noticed about the wild flamingos, I don't know if you, because I also photographed them. No, they get lot, divorced every Sarasota. year. <laughs> they do. Did you just? It look says it up? flamingos. Yes, uh, it says flamingos get divorced every year and find a new oh, mate. Really? Oh, so every year. Year. okay. Yeah, they mate one time with the uh, and it's the male moves on. <laughs> oh, really? So, okay, so they're, yeah, they're they, like... they mate one time, he has some babies, and he leaves or <laughs> he moves okay. on to somewhere else. I'm like, it's so funny. It says they mate for one year, get divorced, and find a new mate the next year. <laughs> okay. And it says fl flamingo mating rules is learn the funky chicken. <laughs> um, it says flamingos are very good dancers. They twist and preen, and they do the funky flamingo with the or the funky chicken with flapping their wings and displaying their backs. So, have you all noticed any of that going on? <laughs> The funky chicken. I have seen That's them do that. Movie. I've seen them do that in Sarasota Jungle Gardens, and one will start, and then they will all start with that oh. wing spread, and then they will start with the noise, right? And then they'll start moving. It's fascinating. But I've also noticed that the well, ones in the wild have much longer legs. Did you notice that, Ronald? They seem like their legs are a lot longer than the ones in captivity. That I've seen. Yes, yes, I think because I believe ours that flew here uh, are American flamingos, and the other ones are a Caribbean flamingo. So there's different types of flamingos. I, I'm, okay. I, yeah, I'm no expert on flamingos, but I, I know there's different species. So I think that probably has a lot to do with it. But it's funny what you were saying because I have seen flamingos in captivity, and uh, flamingo gardens in uh, Fort Lauderdale. You're right. They would. It seems like when a plane would fly over, one would start flapping, and then all of a sudden, all the others would start flapping their wings at the same time. So, yeah, very, very social birds. But those, I think, are the Caribbean uh, flamingos. Okay. So, um, one of the questions were, um, somebody wanted to know where flamingos sleep. Does anybody know that answer? I'm trying to look it up. All I see is flamingos sleep standing they sleep, up. They sleep standing up in the water with their heads tucked. But half of their brain does not go to sleep. Half of their brain is always on alert. Mm -hmm. So that's what it says. It says that um, you, uh, when a, a flamingo is in deep sleep, they will have their heads on their backs. They eat with their heads upside down, sleep with their heads on their backs, and often rest by standing for long periods of time on one leg. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess they do get up and treat. That them. makes sense. I mean, I have never seen a, fl a flamingo uh, sleep per se, but if they're like other wading birds, they exactly uh, egrets, uh, spoonbills, they do exactly as described that the flamingo does. They'll sit on one leg, their head will be cocked behind, and they'll rest. So it's very, very similar behavior. Of course, they always have to be on the lookout for something that wants to get them. But typically, they'll sleep in shallow waters. I've seen like spoonbills sleep in shallow water. So I guess if anything makes a noise, they'll know and get alerted. 
Yeah, I wonder if, like, I'm talking about the areas they're in, like, you have alligators, you have sharks in some of the places. Like, did you see the video that Hung uh, had with all the bull sharks? And I no, think he said, right. yes. Oh, my gosh. He has a great video. He's in his kayak. And, like, the bull shark's fins or top fins way out of the water. It's very shallow. And they're they're getting stuck. Like, they're pushing their way through. And I think he said they were all from, like, four feet to eight feet long. And it's just a whole school of bull sharks. And he's in his kayak out there. That's something I would not want to bump me from underneath the kayak. No. No, no, no. I don't know. I'm a big chicken when it comes to stuff like that. I'm like, oh, but the kayak that you use, I know very well because a friend of mine um, has one and they're great. They have the bait, the wide bait wells in them and everything. They're the coolest kayak, definitely if you're a fisherman, but it's got to be pretty cool using it for photography too, because you have all these great spaces for fishing stuff that you can use for your photography equipment. Correct. And, and the key is what makes it a great fishing vessel also makes it a great photography vessel because it's hands-free. Uh, so you're pedaling. That's how you propel the kayak. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. You can't always do that. You do have to use a paddle when it gets really shallow. But you're pretty much hands-free. You're sitting in a chair that's, you know, above the kayak. It's very comfortable for long, for long weights. Uh, it saves your lower back. Uh, they're really, really great kayaks. I mean, they're, they're expensive, but... Uh, you know, they're very stable, very comfortable, and they work great for fishing or for photography because I actually do more photography now than I, I do with fishing uh, at this point. So, oh, do you really? Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of repurposed it. I mean, I still fish, but not nearly as much with all of, you know, Florida's had so many water quality issues, especially where I am in Tampa Bay with the red tides and all that. So, I kind of gave that a back seat. Um, I do go up further north where the water's a little nicer. I get it. So I got a question to ask you since you just said you're from Tampa Bay and I did. Was that really true that when the hurricane was coming, it sucked all the water out of Tampa Bay or was that just BS going on? No, no, it was because, true. And I forgot which hurricane okay. it was. It, there was people walking out on Bayshore. I, I think it was yeah, Idalia that did it. it was, uh, uh, no, I was think it was Ian. Ian. It was last year. It was Ian. Yeah. It was Ian. No, it, it was Ian. No, and I'm sure you can find it online. It, it, it was absolutely it true. It was Ian. It was Ian. Mm -hmm. Ian okay. shot all the water out of Tampa Bay. Because yeah. I, I saw pictures and it was just hard to believe. And, you know, sometimes you're not for sure if stuff is photoshopped or whatever. And then yeah, I heard no, people no, saying that wasn't was true. It was true. I have a friend that lives over uh, there by uh, Davis Island. And he said, yeah, there was people walking out in the middle of the bay. And he said the amount of stuff you'd see in there, like beads, all the beads from... Um, uh, <laughs> Gasparilla. Ybor City. Yeah. Said, <laughs> unfortunately, sadly, there, Gasparilla. Was, I forgot about there that. was scooters in there. Those electric scooters, people were throwing those in there. I, he, he said it exposed all that, which is unfortunate. Oh, my God. I know. That's a whole other topic. Polluting. Uh, apps, I thought I had my ringer up. Sorry about that. Absolutely polluting our environment. Just yeah, we can have a whole discussion on that. I, I don't, I don't know how you stop it, but it's definitely a problem. No, I, I don't know either, because it, it comes down to, uh, you know, each individual. Honestly, like I don't know how you go and dump something like that in water, and you don't even think about like gas and oil and stuff yeah. like that getting in, and like what happens to wildlife. You know, uh, I was having an interesting conversation with someone a couple of weeks ago, and they were telling me because um, I'm interested in cloud seeding. I've always been very interested in making rain and so forth in different countries when droughts are coming for farming techniques. So they were tell asking me, did I know that our government tried to stop hurricanes um, with it's the stuff that you know the the beads that you put in plants and it holds moisture and you just put your oh, beads. Yes. Okay. They, they, they supposedly now I don't know this for a hundred percent. I'm actually going to go look this up. Um, 
they claim that the Navy was sent out and they dropped all of this stuff into a hurricane to see if it would suck the moisture up. This was like a large quantity. And this was like back in the 50s or 60s. What happened was this stuff went into the water and then marine life inhaled it and it killed them. So Ooh. there was a lot of fish and stuff. A lot of marine life died. It just bloated them up. They couldn't get rid of it and they inhaled it. So I am going to look that up. I'm not 100% sure that that happened, but I have a very good source that told me this story. I don't think they would have told me the story, but I thought, well, that's crazy. Them trying to stop a hurricane that way. Um, but I guess, you know, they were trying to figure it out, but it just blows my mind how, you know, our, everyone just doesn't think about the wildlife like you know i see people um talking about uh bobcats running around in neighborhoods and bears coming around in neighborhoods and all of that where are they supposed to go you're i'm don't we're just building everywhere um yes you know they have nowhere to go so it's just sad that to think one day there won't be any more flamingos they're not going to be any more bears. Like, how can you imagine a world without wildlife? No, no, it's so not, not worth living. No, you know, well, it, I mean, it, on, on the happier note, uh, there are some efforts here in Florida to save a lot of the, the land, uh, the wildlife corridor. Uh, yes, path, yes. path of the Panther, uh, that's worth seeing. And, uh, you know, Carlton Ward is done a great Carlton job Ward. yeah Carlton Ward's done a great job of helping preserve a lot of the farms because I mean I I kind of get it you know if you inherit a thousand acres and you don't want to do farming so what do you do with the land right you sell it to the highest bidder and that's pretty yeah. much what's been happening because everyone's been moving here uh, but uh, if, if you watch Path of the Panther, Panther he talks about how we're going to cut off Florida it'll just be little green spots here and there and the animals won't be able to travel north or south anymore so it yes. thankfully like I said, he's had a lot of success so if you get a chance to to support him uh, watch his, his his movie um and he's got books online and he just talks about uh you know his his efforts and they yes got the state to back some of it i think the santos backed some of the efforts to uh, preserve thousands of acres instead of you know turning into housing developments or highways um, they will leave it to, to green space so the animals can travel from the everglades all the way up north to uh you know northern florida or georgia right well it's amazing with carlton's project too and florida countries worked with him on several things um it's amazing to see that you know the only way that those panthers could have got on the other side of the Kissimmee river is they swam it and they're over there and they're breeding and there's more and more sightings of these panthers so it is really awesome and i'm talking about he is an amazing photographer period yes. um but yes. he does a lot with the ranchers and farming and everything in the state of florida he's very active um so I would love to have him on here. In fact, I need to reach out to him because he he just does so much in the wildlife corridor. Even though we've done articles on it, I would just like to hear it from him. I'm glad you brought that up, Ronald, because I'm I'm done I'm making that list right now. I'm gonna reach out to him. He's such a busy guy now, you know. Yes. He's yes. He's really no, come I, a long way. Yeah, so, my my wife and I saw him in Tampa for the. Uh, debut of uh path of the panther so yes it's great have you seen it karen i path have not the it's, it's, you got it's on my it. list i need to watch it i'm all you my friends are like, you have to see it you have to see it no i will watch it so for sure. what are you looking forward to the most tomorrow karen I, i'm telling you you got 70 flamingos, flamingos. But you have 70 yeah. 70 flamingos 70. That's what I'm so, looking for. <laughs> and you have fellow photographers with you now that have come on this journey with you. So yes. before and, and Hung Do is going to guide us tomorrow. And Hung Do better he's be there. He's gonna right? take us. Yeah. He knows where they are. So he's he's, yes. he's our guy. Carol. Yes, Carol, I totally agree with you, Carol. So we need to do whatever we can to do protect the wildlife. Oh, and that's so yes. true. You know, um, a lot of us have come together, Ronald, um, from the the Southwest Florida Eagles, and okay. that's how I met. That's how I met Karen. Have you been to that nest? 
Uh, which you're talking about? Um, I mean, there's so many. Have you been to yeah. that? That's the okay. Sapphos uh, 40. Uh, yeah, D uh, that's the Dick Pritchett one, right? Or, yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. I know exactly where that is. I've been there. For me, it's far, and I actually do Eagle Watch uh, here uh, in my area. So, I interesting fact, which I never knew, we have the most nesting pairs of eagles in all of the United States. We may not have the most eagles overall, but the most nesting eagles come to Florida every year. There's, I last count, I think it was like 2,500 nesting pairs uh, yes. come here every year, and they're 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 here now. Uh, and, and they do mate for life. Of course, if a mate dies or gets killed, then they do find another mate. So October is a great month to see them because the ones that don't have mates yet will actually uh, try to find a mate. And they do their little ritual where uh, where the towns they'll invert, and it's absolutely amazing. I I've seen. Have you have you seen that, Ron? Have you seen that? I've, I've seen it in practice where the youngsters were inverted. Uh, I actually have pictures of it. Uh, from uh, from Lakeland, uh, where they're inverted, I'd have to try to find the photo, but it's it was pretty amazing. So the, the youngsters will, will practice that. They'll, they'll practice that maneuver where one's here and one's upside down, and their talons are up like this. I, I'll see if I can find the photo for you. To give me a, a minute now, or two. But so I have I've always heard that about eagles, and um, I asked the group this. We actually do a a. a Florida, the country, the what I can't even think of it right now. <laughs> eagle country. I went to total blank. But, um, you know, we do the eagle country. And have you ever seen the Southwest Florida Eagles, Harriet or M or Harriet, any of them ever do that aerial acrobatics during mating time? Because I have never noticed them to do that. But this is supposed to be something they do all the time. And it's like, I just never have heard of them doing that. I think they, as they may have done it this morning today, the, the, um, the uh, aerial M15 and his new mate, when they sold, Liz said yes, really, really, they do it yes. way high up, not necessarily down low where we can see them, but I'm pretty well, sure they supposedly, they supposedly will spiral all Sometimes the way. Sometimes they'll to, come all the way down to the ground. Yes. Yeah. I've and photos and of it, but never in person. I, oh my gosh, Liz! Did you see to this see today? What happened? Oh, because to of the trees, Harriet was on. They were fighting. They will oh, also fight. There. Yeah. Um, I'm just I'm that, that shot, but. <laughs> okay. We lost your video. <laughs> Let's see. She said you couldn't see it because of the trees. So I was wondering, um, you know that. I just, I've never heard of the Southwest Florida Eagles doing it, but I've always been told that they always do it. And Lime said that they caught Harriet doing doing that a few years a few back. Years back. Oh, I really? would love to just see it. I would love to just see it with my own eyes because they say it's amazing that they will spiral all the way to earth and then they let go be right before the ground. And I've, I've also that. heard... I've heard sometimes that some have not let go um, when they've come to the ground. Now, one thing about you, weren't you out shooting grizzly bears in Alaska? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I was. You and Tio are crazy. You and Saunders are nuts. Have you ever done grizzly bears, Ronald? I have not. That's a bucket list trip. Uh, I oh. definitely need to get out and, and uh, do the bears, the bear thing. What is that like? Are you, are you, um, how close are you <laughs> to these crystals? Well, records? okay. So in Yellowstone, um, the rangers are everywhere and they make sure that you're very safe. <laughs> in Alaska, if you get eaten by a bear, there's no one telling you to get away from <laughs> the bears. So, but I, really? was shoot, I was shooting them. There's a place in Alaska. There's several, there's several places in Alaska, but, um, Brooks Falls. I didn't get there this year, but I did go last year. Brooks Falls, you can serve to that apex predator than anywhere else on earth. Some of the bears are feet away from you. I was shooting with my 100 to 500 at 100 millimeters and backing up. That's how close they were. But you're shooting from a, 
a boardwalk and they're in the water and on the Russian river and there were fishermen in the, in the river fishing and we were on, the photographers were on the boardwalk. So, so there were fishermen between the bears and us. So I figured if the bears are going to go after someone, they're going to go after the fishermen before they go after the photographers. We don't. So, but um, yeah, we were pretty oh close. I would say the closest, um, not quite as close on the Russian river as I was uh, at Brooks Falls, but pretty close, maybe about, I don't know, a hundred feet from them as they're Ooh. walking in the river, a hundred to 200 no. feet away. I mean, they could have charged nope. if they wanted to, but uh, no, nope. we all Check had bear spray out. at the ready. Some some of the fishermen had had wet, had pistols, had, had guns, but you know, it, it's it's they're fast. They move very fast. Did you uh, hold on, Ronald? I'm gonna pull this in. Did you uh, get to visit? Oh, Eagle look at there! Oh my God, look at that shot! Oh wow, Ronald, was that Lake Hancock? Yes, it is. That was yeah, the only okay. thing I've. Uh, that was lo relatively low to the ground. They didn't actually lock, but uh, that's the closest I've seen that kind of behavior. And it's more of a juvenile there, I guess, practicing with an adult um, for when it's his time to find his mate and, and do that, do it for real. That is, <laughs> that is a bad ass shot. I love it. Wow. I know. What's that? Okay. So speaking of bucket list, Karen, what is on your bucket list to photograph okay well What's when my something? husband wins the lottery um, <laughs> i'm gonna go to churchill for the polar bears and uh, galapagos and um oh i gotta go back to costa rica and uh i'm going back to alaska next year i'm just gonna drive my car um and i would like to go to oh, antarctica yeah. to see the penguins yeah yeah nice what about you ronald uh for for landscape photography i want to do iceland that's bucket list and for wildlife i probably want to just go back to costa rica again um colombia also has my interest too i've seen some of my photographer friends and colombia apparently has a lot of exotic birds as well i think maybe even more in costa rica but i'm told it's more difficult to find them because they're spread out much further whereas costa rica um very uh, it's much smaller space so you could probably see a lot more but yeah, I would say Coast those shows do. Now the wildlife oh, in and Borneo is like everywhere, right? Borneo. I want to go see those, uh, the orangutans. Oh, <laughs> orangutans. Yeah. Costa Rica yeah, I have is a amazing. Lot of trip. Yeah, Costa Rica is amazing. And I, you know what? I forgot to mention, I guess there's so many, but safari africa i mean come oh on, of cat. course uh, yes yeah yeah I, I have not done that yet but that's that's up there too uh that would probably be tied with alaska maybe <laughs> I, there, there's a lot of great places to see but yeah i guess you know what if i had to say if i had one last trip uh left i would i'd probably have to say i would do a safari that would probably be the top of my list africa Hi, and i know the, the, the problem with Africa is Africa is so large. I mean, I actually did some some study. Can you blow uh, that picture up, Ronald? Oh, Can which you one? Blow that, that picture up. That is so cool. Because wow. I was inverted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay I Maverick. That joke. Maverick. Yeah, I got that joke all the time from this photo. Yeah. Marie's in here. Marie's from our Eagle Country podcast, and she's a, another great photographer too. So many photographers. Yeah, that that, was a fun I'm shot. Going, that's just a cool shot, and I can't believe that Liz said that it was. You know, look at that. This was more of a defense posture, I think. Um, and once again, once you sit in the field and you wait, like I saw this coming because there was an eagle perched high up in a tree and then this juveniles were flying by. I'm like, oh, something's going to happen here. And uh, when the juveniles flew by, the uh, adult jumped up and made the other one jump up <laughs> or turn sideways. Wow. Eagle, so eagle is this fun. like the parent of the juveniles or no? This not necessarily. Just... No, not necessarily because the parents kind of leave. Uh, you know, once, so the typical, the, time, season, yeah, the, yeah, the, the typical nesting season in Florida is from, you know, lay the eggs, November, December, uh, and then 
raise the young until about April, May. And of course, there's uh, exceptions to that. If they lose their clutch, then they'll reclutch. Sometimes they'll reclutch in January and they'll be here till late May. But the, the typical season is November through, let's say, April or May. Uh, and then that's it. Then the adults are on their own. I'm sorry, the juveniles are on their own. And from what I'm told, the uh, success rate is only 50%. So if there's two, two eaglets, uh, you know, chances are only one's going to make it to four or five years old. Well, maybe two and a half. Our eagle and then, season starts October 1st, and it started October 1st. <laughs> yes, yeah, it, it does. I mean, technically it starts, yes, because actually Eagle Watch uh, expects yeah. the report to be done uh, starting now. Okay. I, we're, we're down here uh, in in Fort Myers. Uh, we're constantly on Eagle Watch. <laughs> we we haven't taken a break. <laughs> I see them. A, they don't I leave do, the area it, really. Our our guys are around. Yeah, they stay around all year mm -hmm. round. Oh, they so do. They, they stay right around. Okay. Oh yeah, they move to like the cell tower. They'll go over to the cell tower for a while, or they go somewhere else. But they pretty much stay around. They. And um, I was talking to someone and they were saying that ours, uh, Florida Eagles, um, they really don't migrate. I, why would they want to? They're, <laughs> they're in Florida. The only thing that probably <laughs> upsets them is the hurricanes later. But yeah, Marie says they stay within the territory. The food source is plentiful all year, so there's no reason for them to leave. So, But they are harder to find. They're yeah, they are. Harder. It's not, they're not, yeah, as, it's not the same. Because, I mean, I'll tell you from my experience, Circle B, you'll see them now, September, October, and you'll see them maybe right up easily. You'll see them up until, let's say, April. After that, yeah, it's... Few and far between. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know where that, you find them, place. Ronald? Do you know where they are? They're at the dump. They're at the dumps. Yes, uh, they are. Right hey, the all, all my family are hunters and everything and they say that uh the eagles are as just a uh vulture in a tuxedo <laughs> yeah <laughs> they, i know <laughs> they, they say you'll see all these vultures over with red roadkill and one eagle hanging out with them or up in the dump they're all if you go to that uh puna gorda dump they're everywhere oh, yeah. up at the top there's tons of eagles at the top of that dump really? i have a friend whose husband is the fleet manager for one of the dumps out near Lake Okeechobee. And I asked him in uh, June, in March, if he would give me a tour. And so he invited, I, I went out and I got a hat, hard hat on and he drove me around in the truck and I shot the eagles all over the dump. And I asked him, do they go away in the summer? And he said, absolutely not. They are here 24 seven. They're here oh, all yeah. the time. So okay, they are, yeah. they're hanging out where they have, they're not harder. <laughs> And just get free food. I agree. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's as I've had a great time with you guys. And Ronald, I'd like to get in touch with you, both of you. So in uh Absolutely. Florida country, we do uh we actually do profiles on photographers, and I would love to uh showcase your wildlife photography and do like maybe you could pick out your best photos and then kind of would do like a photo essay and share it with our readers um i think that's like between our recipes is number one and then the most uh read articles in our magazine is always wildlife if it pertains to wildlife they're there so i really appreciate you guys taking your time tonight and coming on and sharing your flamingo stories and karen i hope that you guys have an amazing day tomorrow Me too. Um, and I, can't, I look forward to seeing your photos. And yeah, uh, Ronald, oh, I, I'm so happy I met you. I'd love to keep in contact. Thank you. And, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I, I appreciate definitely that. cover stuff. <laughs> and thanks, guys, for always staying. I really appreciate you guys spend your hour and, in fact, a little more than an hour, but you guys yeah. always come on and support us. And I really, really appreciate that so much. And I'm glad we could bring uh, the flamboyance to you. That's <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's gonna. It's gonna be my new word. <laughs> the flamboyant. I thought it was like just like they're very proud of themselves and very flashy. <laughs> That's what I thought that meant. So. Yeah, you so somebody, somebody chose the name well. That was a well chosen name. But. Absolutely. Yes, it was. 
<laughs> you know, when she said, uh, you had told me last night, oh, we've got to get Ronald because he, he's all about the flamboyance. And I thought, well, you're talking about like, oh, he put a lot of flair into his photos. <laughs> well, they are. <laughs> I was like, I had to ask Karen because she kept using the term. I said, okay, what is this flamboyant thing? I got to What is it? When she told me that, I was like, wow, I was totally thought this was like Flamingo going, look at me, look at me. No, there's, so. there's a lot of jargon. There's a lot of jargon when it comes to birds. <laughs> okay, well, good. I'm going to have to learn it. Well, guys. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we have dragonfly porn, Dale. You're right. We've got eagle porn. We went to dragonfly porn. I don't know what type of wildlife porn will come up next, but I'm sure it will come up. <laughs> All right, guys. You. you have, have a, a great night. night. Good night, Thank everyone. You. Thank All you right. so much. Good night. Good night.